As we put together our long-term needs study several years ago, we collected a lot of feedback from our customers. People are very mobile today. As our customers travel around the country, they see what other toll agencies are doing and they come back to Kansas and what we really hear from them is that they want to keep moving at highway speeds through those electronic lanes. When you're thinking about changing and adding new things or making big idea changes, you think, well, I might get pushed back. And, and really, when beginning to talk to the staff, the board, you know, it became very easy. There wasn't many negative aspects to moving towards open road towing. As we began planning for highway speed electronic tolling, we began having a number of internal department meetings so that we could evaluate every aspect of highway speed uh, electronic tolling. It was important for KTA to protect its revenue, but at the same time, we wanted to give customers a better driving experience. We decided to do that with the camera system. We're using video enforcement to help keep tolls low for everyone. Because KTA doesn't receive any tax support, it's very important that everyone pay their tolls. You know, one of the biggest challenges through this whole project has been building a system that we had to have live right away. As soon as we started using cameras and lanes, we had to have a complete back office ready for image review, for billing, account management, reporting, had to all be in place. You know, this type of a project takes a lot of partners. And so partners, consultants, uh, contractors coming together to make this thing work is important. And, and they bring different expertise. There's a lot of different models out there across the country and bringing those experts to the table, we're able to take all that information, put it together and make a model that works for Kansas. Typical contracts are me and a contractor and, and making things work that way. There's a lot of things in this contract that our forces had to do in certain phases. So we'd bring a contractor in, then we have to kind of kick them out of the way so our guys could come in and then go back and forth and that that creates some challenges but it, it's kind of neat to see everybody work together. Very early on we identified that we would need to have regular meetings on the project site. That communication with the contractor and all their subcontractors really has helped keep everything in line because there's a lot of pieces to the puzzle and they're, they're working in parallel and at the end we need everything to work together so having that open line of communication and frequent communication has really helped us. On this project we actually went to Eastern Terminal first and then we went to East Peak and then Southern Terminal and part of that was that we could use our construction resources that we have in-house that have the experience and, and do that project well and then move on to the next project and also do it well and, and not be trying to spread ourselves too thin. One of the challenges associated with the first project at Eastern Terminal was the schedule. We built that project in nine months and there was a lot to learn in that first project. A lot of the challenges was trying to keep traffic through a project and, and not affect the existing traffic much while you're trying to build something new for them. We like to put ourselves in the customer's place. Uh, we, we, we realize that it's confusing. We realize there's a lot of cones out there. So that's the biggest key is to be present with the customer. Realize what they're going through. We rely on a lot of different tools for communicating with our customers. From the website, to text alerts, to uh, signage on the roadway, it just takes a lot of different methods to be able to communicate construction information to customers. Before, our systems have been people pull in, we have a toll collector, they do the transaction, and, you know, and then the, the customer moves on. What we're moving to is our electronic customers not stopping at high speeds, but adjacent to that is a facility where our customers are stopping uh, to do the transactions with cash. One of the important design considerations that we needed to incorporate into the ORT Plaza plans was the safety aspect of merging high-speed traffic with traffic that had to stop at the booth to either pay or get their ticket. So what that resulted in was longer lanes approaching and exiting the plazas. We actually needed to build what people think was an interchange to get our cash customers off and then bring them right back on in a safe manner. But the biggest thing for me was that interactions with the uh, toll collection facilities, keeping those operational during the project uh, was, was paramount to our business. 
One big challenge we had with the highway speeds, we hadn't, you know, read transponders to those speeds ever in the past. And we had a lot of work to do to make sure that we could read the transponders at that speed. We have an amazing team and it's new to everybody, but we embrace that and then we take off with it. Eastern Terminal was neat to get done. At times it seems daunting and you're never gonna make it. So the end is kind of a relief, but it's kind of inspiring too to see it all get, get done. East Peak was very different than the, the Eastern Terminal project. With I-70 coming onto the turnpike, when we started looking at alignments for the roadway, it was very, very tight. It became very clear that I would not be able to miss the uh, existing toll building. We were figuring out a way to put the roadway right through the middle of the building, but uh, move all those facilities down into this tunnel that's underground. Just one minor mistake and uh, you're, you've lost your systems, which in our business is very serious. The completion of the second ORT project at East Topeka was very exciting because it opened up the entire I-70 corridor for our electronic customers. Now that we have highway speed electronic lanes along I-70, we continue to hear from customers that they love nonstop travel. Now we've completed Eastern Terminal, Topeka, we've got that free flow. The last piece of the puzzle is Southern Terminal. As we moved to a southern terminal, actually southern terminal is designed exactly like eastern terminal. Since we're the last project, it has helped that there were a few that forged ahead before us. We've been able to take some of the lessons learned on those previous projects to make the job go a little bit faster. But on the southern terminal project, we also have a couple concrete box culverts and we've had to construct those to replace pipes. Uh, that existed out there that weren't adequate for the, the drainage and addressing that adequately to ensure that, you know, what we're constructing now is going to hold up over time. The completion of Southern Terminal is really key. It, it really is the final piece of our modernization effort that we had planned in long-term needs study over these last few years. Now that we add Southern Terminal, we have a freight corridor throughout the Midwest. This is not just good for the KTA. This is a big transformation in Kansas transportation. Open road towing is the catalyst for where we're going to take the future. The work that we've already done with video enforced lanes, uh, including the highway speed lanes, we've put systems in place that we can use in the future as we continue to advance our toll system. You know, as we approach the end of this conversion process. It's going to be exciting to see where we go next.